Today I wanna to share an important concept with you guys when it comes to understanding the physiology and nutrition associated with injuries, but most specifically for lower back injuries because I know a lot of you currently are dealing with lower back injuries or lower back pain and are looking to get out of that pain and overcome that lower back injury and get back to your daily routine or life. Hey, what's going on everybody? Remy Sovereign here from RemySovereign.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about an important concept which is the physiology and nutrition associated with injuries. But we'll most specifically be using examples related to the lower back. Now if you're someone that maybe has a shoulder or ankle injury and is watching this video currently, this video could also apply to you from the kind of more of the general concepts as we'll just be using lower back injuries as examples throughout this video. Now you might be asking why is it important to understand the physiology and nutrition associated with injuries? Well, the physiology and nutrition are what are specifically going to impact the recovery rate at which we heal because it's the physiological processes that allow our injury to heal and we specifically in influence the physiology from our diet and nutrition and what we consume. So the important concepts that I'm gonna be talking about in today's video is the internal and external components associated with an injury. So the internal component can be referred to as the actual injury itself and everything going on inside the injured area. So that could be, so for example, we'll use a herniated disc in the low back as an example. Then the external components are everything that is on the outside of that herniated disc, which could influence its recovery time. So that may be the blood vessels that are associated with the spinal disc, such as on the peripheral region, or it could be the vertebral end plates, or it could be the blood vessels that uh, insert into the vertebral body and allow for nutrients to diffuse across the end plates itself, such as glucose and oxygen into the spinal disc. So we'll start with the internal components first. So it's important to understand the internal components because that's gonna influence and determine what we need to consume from our, from our from foods and from our diet in order to influence and help with the recovery process. So for instance, in the internal portion of things, there may be a decreased amount of ATP. There may be a decrease in overall number of cells within the spinal disc when compared to its healthy original state that it once was in. There could be maybe a decrease in proteal glycans, decrease in water content. All of these factors considered are important to understand because then that's gonna determine what we need to consume or eat in order to influence the recovery process of that spinal disc injury. Now, when it comes to the external point of view, it's important to understand the external point of view because we could have the best diet we want, but if we can't get those nutrients into the spinal disc uh, from our blood vessels or across those vertebral end plates as a result of maybe some sort of damage that is, is associated with maybe blood vessels or the vertebral end plate, then it's really going to limit our recovery and we may not be able to actually get any nutrients in if we had complete damage. However, with that being said though, what I'm trying to point out though is that the external is just as important as the internal compartments when determining what we need to eat and consume because for example let's say our blood vessels are, have been damaged or we have arthrosclerosis which we have hardening or narrowing of our, our uh, arteries we won't be able to basically transport nutrients effectively to the injured area. The same could be said with the vertebral end plates. If there's damage or calcification along the end plates, maybe certain pores close, and now we have problems with diffusion of certain molecules such as oxygen and glucose, which are important in producing ATP in the spinal disc. If we can't diffuse those molecules into the spinal disc cell, then that could potentially just cause more damage. Maybe there's gonna be more of a decrease in the number of cells we have. Some cells will die as a result of not being able to produce ATP efficiently. So that's why you guys, it's important to understand the external compartment, car, compartments because if we have external problems, we have to address those problems with regards to the internal uh, issues as well. We have to address both effectively in order to kind of develop that optimal recovery from a physiological perspective. Now let's use another example. Let's talk about a muscle related injury. Maybe this is a, uh, a muscle strain in the low back or it could be just maybe soreness after a workout or something. So when it comes to the internal perspective from my muscle, there could be a lot of problems going on, such as maybe problems with the calcium ATPase channel, sodium potassium ATPase channel, chloride channel, potassium ATP channel. So as you see guys, a lot of these channels are influenced directly by ATP. And so glycolysis, which is a energy system that produces ATP, if we have a significant uh, production of lactate and there's a buildup of lactate, which is the end product of glycolysis, and we can't effectively remove the lactate from the cell because we have 
maybe monocarboxylate transporters are, uh, we don't have enough of them, or there may be some certain gene that is encoding or some sort of gene that's preventing them from being produced. Whatever the case may be, point being is we can't, if we can't effectively eliminate the lactate, we can just have this whole backup process where lactate will inhibit lactate dehydrogenase, and then we can kind of go up and up the cycle through glycolysis, go backwards uh, through certain steps, and we're not gonna be able to produce ATP as a result of this whole backup and glycolysis. If we can't produce ATP, it's gonna influence those channels that I mentioned, like sodium potassium ATPase, maybe potassium ATP, maybe calcium ATPase, or it could even influence the sarcoplasmic reticulum or the cross bridge cycle. So point being, guys, is there a lot, there's a lot of problems that could be going on, and it's a very complex topic itself when understanding nutrition and physiology, because nutrition is what is, it's kind of the study of how our diet and what we consume is gonna directly influence the metabolic processes uh, within our body. And so it's important to understand that the foods that we consume can specifically influence our, the time to recovery, because if we're eating maybe a healthy diet, as opposed to a bad diet, we can maybe significantly improve our recovery time. So the, that's the important kind of takeaway that I wanna hit home here, guys, is that there's the internal and external components that we need to understand and potentially need to treat if we have damage to those external component, components with regards to an injury. Now guys, this doesn't have to be just applied to a lower back injury. This could be applied to any injury, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video. But in order to optimally optimize things, we have to look at where all the damage may be associated or occurring, whether that's internally or externally. Now, if you guys are someone that is currently dealing with an injury, and if you have just kind of changed your diet or nutrition, and have noticed significant results, or it's helping you within your recovery, please leave a comment below, share with me. I'd love to hear what maybe you added into your diet, whether that's maybe increasing more vegetables, maybe it's taking a certain supplement and that you've noticed maybe less pain or have maybe helped with your recovery. Whatever the case may be, guys, share your story. I'd love to hear about it and just love to hear some of the results that people may have experienced as a result of maybe improving their diet. And also, if this is your first time watching uh, this video or one of my videos, uh, be sure to subscribe as I'm always posting different nutrition tips, uh, exercise tips or performance tips that are related specifically to lower back injuries or lower back pain itself, but it can also be applied and I also sometimes apply to other injuries and relate to them as well as best as possible. It's, that's time. So guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this and were able to take something away or and I was ho hopefully I was able to educate you in some way. But uh, with that being said, guys, I wish you guys all a successful and productive day and take care.